Good morning, good morning, good morning. Okay, let's go ahead and get started. As you're coming in, that's great. And uh, if you're getting a cup of coffee, that's all right. Go ahead and get it and make your way to your seat. A couple of things I need to cover. Number one is just to welcome you. I'm glad you're here today. Um, it's always exciting to see how God brings us together to worship right here on this street corner. And um, <clears throat> going to be some uh, cool things happening. If you're a guest of ours today, maybe you've never been here before, or you've been once or twice, we don't know who you are. There's a little white card in the back of the chairs. It's called a VIP connection card. Very important. People, and that's you if you're our guest. If you just fill that out, we'd appreciate it. There's a little uh, box back there with a uh, <clears throat> little slot in the top of it where you can just drop that card. Don't have to put any money or anything like that in there. Just that card, and we'll know who you are and what's up with you. Uh, okay. Uh, we're always celebrating the things that uh, are cool to celebrate, uh, especially with our students in our middle school, high school, elementary school, different things that are going on. And uh, we've, had, we've seen our students, both in academics and in sports, um, have, have some really great, great success. Our, uh, we, we did incredible, I think, at the, the last literary, <coughs> this most recent literary thing. I mean, just like. People don't even want to compete against us anymore. We're having to bring them in from other states. And that's a great thing. But we also have one of our students, Laura, where are you? Hey, Laura, raise your hand. I'm sorry to catch you in mid-drink there. <laughs> this is Laura, and she has been competing in her discipline. And you're going to nationals? Which will be what? Which will be where? Seattle, over in West Georgia, okay, and uh, competing for a national title. So congratulations to you, everybody, yeah. Okay, let me touch on some things coming up. This week, Passion Week, today is Palm Sunday, this Passion Week, which leads to the crucifixion and the resurrection of Christ. Thursday night, uh, Andy Cook will be here, our Legacy uh, Builders Ministry is uh, sponsoring this event. He will be talking about the journey to Jerusalem, and uh, there, there it is right there, and uh, that's, that's coming up, and so there's a little video that goes with this, and so if we can look at that video right now, that'd be a cool thing. Okay, Russell? Yeah. That's it. Um, this is not just for people who are a regular part of Legacy Builders Ministries. Uh, anybody can come. There'll be a light dinner at 5.30 here in the Fellowship Hall. The actual Bible study will start at 6.30. And um, if you're coming, if you want to come and share some food and some fellowship at 5.30, we need you to sign up for that. We really need to know how many people are going to be here for that. If you just want to come at 6.30 and... Um, and, or your schedule just makes it so you can only get here by 6.30. That's fine. And, Jan, I'm right. They don't necessarily have to sign up if they're coming at 6.30. Yeah, just want to we'll make sure we have enough food for the people who want to come eat. So you can get with Jan, call the church office, let us know. But that is coming up on Thursday. On Saturday, the day before Easter, there's going to be a family picnic and egg hunt. Uh, it'll start at 12 o'clock right here in the fellowship hall. And um, so Ryan's... Anybody from the children's ministry team in here? Well, is it? I guess it's just. Uh, I, I think I'm right on this. It's just every everybody bring their picnic for their family, and then we're all just, uh, church isn't providing the picnic. You bring your own picnic stuff. That's it. Okay, very good. Starts at twelve. I think the egg hunt will start about one o'clock. So that'd be a cool thing. Terry Bennett. I was. I was trying to. There she is, all the way in the back. Come on up, Terry. I was going to call you up a second ago so we could have you up here ready to go. Um, this is a pretty cool thing that she wants to invite you to be a part of for the second year in a row. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Good morning. Um, last year we started something new here at First Baptist. 
Um, it's not something new. I've been reading a lot about it. It's actually been going on in churches all over the world since the 6th century. That's been a day or two. But it's called Flowering the Cross, and we would like to invite you to bring fresh flowers or greenery. And our good friend, Mr. Russell Blankenship, has made us this unique box covered with chicken wire, but the box is in the shape of a cross. And so last year we brought flowers and filled the cross up with flowers and greenery, and it was absolutely beautiful. And we want to continue that tradition. It represents the transition from Jesus' death on the cross to his resurrection and his coming from the grave on Easter Sunday morning. And it's a beautiful transitional thing. And um, it was just so wonderful to see families and children bringing their flowers last year. And I hope you'll join us this year. Very good. It is a beautiful thing. And I uh, appreciate uh, Terry and that uh, ministry uh, leading us in that. So bring, bring those when? Bring them with them Sunday morning when they come? Fresh cut. Go out there that morning in the dew and cut those flowers. Okay. Very good. Uh, d do want to remind you about uh, we are gathering items up for the Backstreet Children's Home. This is one of those yearly ministries we get to be a part of. I was looking in the parlor. There's a bunch of stuff already in there. And I think that, that there it is right there. If sometime uh, here pretty quick, but before um, Tuesday or Wednesday, if you want to go get some paper towels, cooking oil, ketchup, all that stuff, uh, just bring it up here and drop it off. That would be a great thing. We'll get it down there. Now, the last thing I want to highlight today is that um, but we have a very unique opportunity right here in Cochrane, Georgia, old Cochrane right here in the middle of the state. We're actually going to be able to host a national ministry, women's ministry event. And when I say national, I mean this group, they, 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 they do these, these same conferences in large venues and in auditoriums, and we get to host them here. You might have noticed the table out front. Um, there is some cost if you'd like to attend, but it's uh, on April 21st, and uh, it's just going to be, uh, it's just amazing. It's, it's really cool that we get to host this. Three, three speakers, nationally known speakers, and a good time of worship and laughter and Bible study. So quick video to, to give you a little more information. Hello, my name is Mia Kane, and I'm one of the co-founders of Aspire Women's Events. I also serve as a host and as one of the touring musicians on the team. Today, I'm speaking for all of us, and I can confidently say we can't wait. We are so excited to visit your church this spring of 2024 and to partner with you for this amazing event. On April 21st, we'll be with you at First Baptist Church. We have Bible teacher, author, and speaker Melissa Spolstra comedian Michelle Miller, and music by me, Mia Kane. Hi, I'm Melissa Spolstra, and I'm one of the Bible teachers with Aspire Women's Events. And I just love to open God's Word, to get together with other women, and to see what God through His Spirit and through His Word has to say to each one of us personally. And man, life can just wear us down. We can start to forget some of the truths we know and want to discover other truths we haven't discovered yet in God's Word. So I hope you'll gather your friends. I hope you'll come and join us so that we can dig into God's word together. Aspire is a one night women's event. It's packed with laughter, learning, stories, and music. It's a fun girls night out, but don't get me wrong. It's so much more. We're gonna dig into God's word to equip us to be a light in our community, to bring hope to the workplace, to live out joy in our homes. It's a night of laughter, yes. And it's also a night that sparks transformation and healing from the inside out. I'm so thankful that your church said yes. Yes to opening the doors, yes to volunteering with us, and yes to reaching out to those who need to learn, laugh, and hear the gospel message of truth. That's what Aspire is. This is my invitation to you to invite your friends, your family, your neighbors, as your church continues to be a light in the community. So grab those tickets today and we'll see you there. Okay, so that's, a, that's really a great opportunity that we have. And just to give you a heads up on that thing, um, Melissa, Melissa, can you answer any question I might be fixing to ask? We 
we've got a certain number of tickets here that we're selling. Uh, but they are also advertising this through their own ministry website where they're also making tickets available. So, um, you know, we're, we're, we're not a big, auto, uh, big you know, convention center um, type place. So, so it's really a limited number that we, we can host or house. And so, um, yeah, if that's something you want to uh, participate in, maybe, maybe there's somebody you know, a, a girlfriend of yours, a coworker that you've been just talking to about Jesus, and, and this would be a great thing to bring them to and to just kind of see what that looks like. You might want to go ahead and, um, and, and get those tickets while, while they're still available. So uh, having said that, I'm going to lead us in a prayer, and then we're going we're gonna to sing some of our worship. Um, as I lead into this prayer, just uh, quick, there's a lot of things going on, I know, in all of our lives. Um, and if you wonder, are there ever times when we talk about a lot of the specific prayer requests? That's at our Wednesday night service when we try to look at those. But I will say that uh, um, Taylor Falk, who grew up in this church and just recently had a baby, and it was, you know, there were a lot of things that they've had to take uh, Walker back up to the hospital uh, because they're having trouble regulating some things um, uh, with him. So you can imagine first-time mama and baby having to go back up to the hospital and, and, and all those kind of things. It's kind of scary. So in your thoughts and prayers, say a prayer for the Falk family as well. Pray with me. Father God, we bow before you. We take our hands off of this time because this is not our time. This is your time. And Father, we're here because we need you. And Father, we're here because whether we realize it or not, our hearts are hungry for a fresh touch, a fresh wind, a fresh word uh, from you. And so we, we want to surrender, whatever, whatever that looks like, whatever needs to go on inside of our heart and our minds in this moment, Father, we, we do want to surrender and, and just completely open ourselves to the ministry of your Holy Spirit uh, in music and the testimony of baptism and the study of uh, scripture and the fellowship of believers. Father, just speak to us. Fill us up. And uh, how we might need to respond to you personally or as a congregation. Uh, give us the courage to, to do that. Uh, we do pray for the Falk family. And um, it's kind of scary, especially on that first child. Just, Father, I pray that your peace would rest, rest with them in a, in a powerful way. And I pray that you would give the medical team that in the hospital all the knowledge, insight, and wisdom they need to know best what to do um, here. But, Father, our trust is not ever in hospital. Our trust is in you. And so we, we lift them to you. Thank you for Jesus. And it's in his name we pray. Amen. Amen. You can stand. We're going to try to get you uh, moving and bouncing this morning, all right, as you uh, set your sights on your, your praise and worship of the Father. Here we go. Moving. Wandering to the night, wanting a place to hide in this weary soul, this bag of bones. I try with all my might, but I just can't win the fight. I'm slowly drifting, a bag of Just when I ran out the road, I met a man I didn't know, and he told me that I was not alone. You picked me up and turned me around, you placed my feet on solid ground. I think the master, I think the savior, because you hear me. Save my soul. 
those who died to live is joy it is to give it all for Jesus and for him only oh Jesus all for your glory so come on and praise the Lord with me sing if you Okay, so um, it's fun to see how God works and the different ways He works. And of all the things that go on in the life of our church, our church or any church, uh, the one thing which should bring us the greatest joy is the very same thing that brings heaven the greatest joy, and that is when somebody gives their heart to Jesus Christ. I mean, that's it. That's that's the bottom line. Um, <clears throat> that's that's what we're here for. To um, to be a witness in our world. So I shared with you a story um, a few weeks ago in here as a part of my sermon about our latest college daughter who in a restaurant in the middle of Brunswick, Georgia, uh, asked Jesus into her heart. And that was really kind of uh, an, uh, an incredible night. And so Holly is here today to give her testimony through baptism. Holly, come on up here. There she is. Hey, Holly. Are you nervous? No? Okay. Are you ready to sing now, or do you want to? Still funny. (laughs) Holly is from England. Is it Grimsby? Is that right? Grimsby, England. 
played soccer for four years up here at the college. Uh, uh, I'm at, we're actually co-adoptive parents with her. It's me and Gail, and then there are the other two, uh, Daniel and uh, Julie uh, Mullis. And so uh, we... Yeah, and, and U.S. grandparents right here as well. And, uh, and her mom's back in Grimsby, obviously not able to be here today. She'll watch this service. You think she, Oh, she's live right now. Hey, Mom. Her mom's great. I've gotten to know her over the years when she would come uh, to visit, and uh, it's really cool. So have you asked Jesus into your heart? Yes. Yeah. Is he there? Yes. Yeah, he did. It's cool to sing. Uh, I started her reading right away. She lives in Brunswick now, by the way. And... Um, so we got her started reading the Gospel of John, first off. And I think in my heart I almost exploded when she sent a text one day. and said, I just read this in John. This is what I think it means. Am I close at all? I'm like, I love to see people reading Scripture. And uh, which, what book are you in now? Are you in a book? Did you go to Proverbs? Acts and Proverbs. Okay, very good. So it's good stuff. You ready to do this? Here. Step in that water. Ah, uh, I have a good mind, too. A saucy mouth of yours. Okay. Um, now, while she's adjusting to the water, I want to invite, as we always do, our church family. Let's come up here close. Everybody close. Look at this. Here they come. This is your family. Look at it. This, these are your brothers and sisters. You always spend... Yeah. You're making your way up here. It's kind of cool how God brought uh, Holly into not just our life, but into the fellowship of our church. Uh, some of you uh, go to the same small group that she attends when she's here. And back when she was living here, it was coming fairly regular. But Holly, uh, being a proper English woman, uh, she's done it two or three times. How many times have we done that over there with, with the staff? Anyway, she called me one day and she said, I would like to come and do a proper tea with church staff. Can we do that? And I mean, she had the biscuits and and cake. Biscuits and cake, which is not what you're thinking, biscuits or cake. <laughs> I was going to tell you, they were really good. Straight from England. The tea was from England. Her mom had brought it over, which is what she does when she comes. She supplies her. And so she treated us to a proper tea. We've done it either two or three times there in staff. It's really kind of cool as we build relationships. So the Bible says that, that we are to make disciples of all the nations and baptize them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And um, when somebody receives Christ into the heart, this is one of the first things they do. And just you being here in front of these people is your testimony that you have given your heart to Christ. So I need you to sit down with your feet pointing that way. Yeah, it gets the air bubble in it. You gotta. <laughs> it's not gonna come off. <laughs> Do what? Okay, you good? All right. So we're gathered here as the body of Christ to celebrate and to give witness to Ollie's baptism as our newest sister in the faith. And so I'm gonna hold your nose, you hold my hand. You ready? baptize our sister Holly in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. No, no, you'll, need, you'll stay in there for the rest of the service. <laughs> now, don't, don't start going anywhere yet because... Uh, you can just, you can just drive. We got, we got a tarp under there. there you go. We'll let you go change in a second. Just stay where you're at. But where's Kaysen? Kaysen, do you make your way up here? There he is. Kaysen, come up here and stand with me real quick, buddy. You know, last Sunday morning, um, Harley came down. Where's Harley? 
Harley's here. Harley came forward. She said, you know, I asked you to send him a heart several years ago, but I've never taken a public stand. And she took that public stand with Christ right here. Well, unbeknownst to her and to me at that time, there was another young man in the room who actually asked Jesus into his heart last Sunday. Case and Jones, everybody, a new brother in Christ. <laughs> These are the kind of things, and I asked him, he was telling me this morning, I actually kind of knew about it already. Me and Brad, Coach Davis, were pretty tight, so, you know, I had insider information, but he, he pulled me out to tell me himself. I love that, straight up. And so I said, great. I said, let's let everybody know. And then I said, did you bring a spare set of clothes? I said, we, we got the water. We can go ahead and do this right now. And he said, no. I said, okay, we'll do it. But I did want you to hear his testimony. So as we see somebody that God brought all the way from England in a part of her life, and she doesn't even fully understand this yet, is to come in contact with the gospel. Cason uh, started, de- what's that girl's name you're dating? What's her name? Jonna. Yeah. Started dating a girl that loves Jesus. And um, was drawn in. That's, that's just the power of the gospel at work. It really is. And uh, so we rejoice with this young man and we rejoice with this young lady for taking your stand in the water baptism. I think we'll be up here soon doing this, the same thing with you. And that's an incredible thing to be able to experience in the middle of a worship service. It really is. Let's pray. Father God, we love you today. We thank you for all that you do. And there's so much that you do in our lives. We don't, we don't even see it. Father, I, don't, I think there's, there's a lot of things we won't even fully know or be aware of until maybe one day we stand with you in heaven and you show us how you are working in our life. But I thank you for what we do see. I thank you for uh, Harley and her, her, her courage to stand up uh, for Jesus. I thank you for uh, Harley and her, her willingness to give her life to something that is so new to her. Um, I pray that you would guard her and her journey. And for Kaysen, who is already with boldness taking his stand with Jesus. And Father, I pray that we would see this continue to grow. People coming to Jesus. And it's in his strong name that we pray. Amen.
thank you for the blood. We thank you for paying the price for our sin, all of our sin, uh, something we could not do. Uh, we thank you for Jesus this morning. Be with us today. Be with us uh, as we study your word, as we fellowship, um, as we uh, just grow each other, as we, um, as is described in your word, that we, are, we sharpen each other. And I, I pray that that will be happening this morning. Uh, in your church, and I pray that be glorifying to you. So in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. We're going to be in, uh, starting in Luke chapter 19. We're going to look at a couple of verses. We're going to go over to Luke uh, chapter 23, look at some verses, and then in Ephesians. And then I just, I, I want to give you a word of encouragement. Um, start out in uh, Luke chapter 19 beginning at verse 37. This might give it away, but just a reminder, today is Palm Sunday. It's amazing what happens between, scripturally speaking, and in the history of the world, what happens between Palm Sunday and Resurrection Sunday, this week that we call Passion Week. And so just in, really, I'm speaking today more from my devotional uh, study than, than, um, than anything else. Just looking at uh, Palm Sunday, and last week I talked about one of the things we can see if we really pay, look at Palm Sunday is that there are a lot of people cheering there at the beginning uh, of that Passion Week, but they were kind of cheering for the wrong thing because they, they they thought Christ was coming to do one thing. Turns out there was a whole other plan going on. But I, w- I, w- I want you to notice, I want to contrast these these verses in Luke 19 with Luke 23. So Luke 19:37. It's going to be up on the screen reading from the uh, English Standard Version. As he was drawing near, already on the way down the Mount of Olives, the whole multitude of his disciples began to rejoice and to praise God with a loud voice for all the mighty works that they had seen, saying, Blessed is the King who comes in the name of the Lord. Peace in heaven, glory in the highest. I mean, this, this was Palm Sunday. This is what was going on. It was energetic. It was powerful. The people were so excited. But really, the majority of the people were so excited because they thought that their conquering king, their earthly king, was on his way in. He was going to do away with Roman oppression. He was going to uh, reset you know, the whole uh, hierarchy there in Jerusalem, and the Jews would be back at the top of it and, and, and all these things, and they were cheering for that. And <clears throat> in the space of four chapters in the Bible, six days, five days in Scripture or in real time, let's look at Luke twenty three forty four. From, 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 the, from the high energy and excitement of Palm Sunday, just a few days later, Luke 23, 44, it was now about the sixth hour, and there was darkness over the whole land until the ninth hour, while the sun's light failed, and the curtain of the temple was torn in two. Then Jesus, on the cross, Calling out with a loud voice, said, Father, into your hands I commit my spirit. And having said this, he breathed his last. And when the centurion saw what had taken place, he he praised God. He said, certainly this man was innocent. And all the crowds that had assembled for this spectacle, when they saw what had taken place, returned home beating their breasts. In the space of just a few days, the crowds went from lifting their voices up in cheer and adoration and throwing palm fronds and jackets down to right here, walking away, brokenhearted, beating their chests. When I look at Palm Sunday this year, as I've looked at Palm Sunday and leading into Easter, I've, I've, I've kind of, one of the things God's put on my heart is that in, in this whole thing between Palm Sunday and Crucifixion Friday, what we see is, is, among other things, we see what we all struggle with. And that is we, we're hoping for something. And we put all of our energy into that hope. And then we've all in this room, I think, experienced this in one way or another. The thing we hoped for doesn't come true. Falls through. Doesn't come about. And then we're, then we're despondent. Then we're like, man. I can't, I can't believe. And then 
God opens the door that we didn't even know was going to be open. You see, I stopped where I did because you, you and I being on this side of Easter, the resurrection side of Easter, we, we can't fully connect with, with the emotional roller coaster of these people from Palm Sunday to seeing Christ say it is finished on the cross. Whatever their hopes were, they didn't even know to hope for a resurrection from the dead. Even his 12 didn't understand that until it had taken place. Sometimes we don't even know what to hope for. And that's, what, that's why the Bible teaches us we put our hope where? In Jesus. We, 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 you just keep putting your hope in Jesus. Even when there's something that you're hoping for, maybe wishing for, hoping for, and even praying for, hoping for, wishing for. Don't, don't put all your eggs in that basket, but all your eggs in the basket that Jesus loves you and he has a plan for you. And he's good on his promises. And so our hope is based in Jesus Christ. We look at Palm Sunday to Crucifixion Day. And it's like, man, man. When I was, when I was a kid, some people say I still am a kid, just in an old man's body now. Who laughed over there? That's what I figured. I remember one Christmas, um, I was in the, I don't know, 11-year-old range somewhere there, 11, 12. We had recently moved from the mountains of North Georgia to the beaches of South Georgia. And um, we were having Christmas at, at my grandmother's house. And I want, more than anything else, I hoped for that Christmas, I hoped for my first 20-gauge shotgun. Because I felt like I was a big enough little boy to not have to shoot that single shot 410 anymore. I was tired of missing on my one shot and then my dad getting to clean up with his pump shotgun. And I mean, I let it be known, and y'all all done the same, I let it be known to every person that needed to know I wanted a 20 gauge shotgun. You can tell, you can put from Santa on there, I don't care. You can put from Grandma and Grandma, I don't care. I, that, that was it. I, would, I mean, I would make those statements. I don't care if I don't get anything else. As long as I get a 20-gauge shotgun, I'll be happy. Christmas morning came. All the presents were open. And, of course, I wasn't paying attention to all the presents because as soon as I saw it wasn't the present, I was just kind of finished it and laid it to the side because what was I waiting on? The thing I hoped for. And it never came. I can remember that like it was yesterday. It was, I was, golly, I was, I mean, I had stuff all around me. But the thing I had hoped for and wished for, it wasn't there. And man, I was, I was really disappointed. Maybe even a little bit angry. So we do the whole thing, you know, start cleaning up the bows and the paper. And my granny saved the bows back then. So she like had 48,000 bows up in her attic room. She never reused them, but she saved them every year. And then, then it was kind of tradition. We have our big Christmas morning breakfast, and and uh, I didn't even know. So we're all making it in, in, in onto the to the they call it the back porch, but it was enclosed where the dining room table was to eat. And the the blinds were drawn over the side glass doors, and you know I'm still just my hope was shattered. And then mother walked up to open open the blinds to the side glass doors that lit on the back, backyard, and she, and she exclaimed, oh, my goodness, what is that? And I'm still so despondent. I was like, I don't know. My sister was, you know, she said, where did this come from? Who, does anybody know? So we made our way, and so sitting back there just outside the back door was a um, this brand-new 18-foot sport craft uh, boat and motor we just moved down to the brunswick area i'll tell you something i didn't even know to hope for a boat <laughs> <coughs> that that thought never came into my tiny little mind to ask for a boat i was so caught up on my little shotgun that i missed 
the thing that my father had for me, for us. And it was beyond my knowing to even hope for it. Palm Sunday to Crucifixion Friday is a little bit like that. We see it now, and, and we can't imagine from the despondency of Friday to the incredible what of Resurrection Day. But we need to be reminded that's kind of how life is sometimes. R.C. Sproul said, <clears throat> Hope is called the anchor of the soul because it gives stability to the Christian life. But hope is not simply a wish. I wish that such and such would take place. Rather, it is that which latches on, catch this, which latches on to the uncertainty of the promises of the future that God has made. Hope in Christ and all that he has promised. You can hope in those things because he's good for that. Or if you need it said a little bit simpler, Corey Tim Boom, she put it this way. Never be afraid to trust an unknown future to a known God. Never. In Ephesians 3, starting at verse 14, we're just about done. Scripture says, For this reason I bow my knees before the Father, from whom every family in heaven and on earth is named, that according to the riches of his glory, he may grant you to be strengthened with power through his spirit in your inner being, so that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith, that you, being rooted and grounded in love, may have strength to comprehend with all the saints what is the breadth and length and height and depth, and to know the love of Christ that surpasses knowledge that you may be filled with all the fullness of God. And here's the, the verse I really want you to think about. Now to him, Christ, who is able to do far more abundantly than we could ask or think, Christ wants to do for you in your life beyond what you even know to hope for if you'll just put your hope in Christ. To do more abundantly than all that we ask or think according to the power at work within us. To him be glory in the church and in Christ Jesus throughout all generations forever and ever. Amen. We see it all through scripture. Some of you see it in your life. Martha and Mary sent a sent a message to Jesus. Hey, Lazarus is bad sick. We need you here to heal him. Jesus didn't get there before Lazarus died. They were angry. Their hope had been disappointed. They knew Jesus could make him well. But they had no idea to hope that Jesus could resurrect him from the dead. So when Jesus got there, after he had passed away, four days he had been in, in, the, in the tomb. Four days. And they were crying and they were upset because their hope had been disappointed. Their hope was in Jesus getting there in time to do what they thought he needed to do. And then that hope was turned to incredible joy when Jesus looked at that tomb and said, Lazarus, come out, and he did. But who knows the hope for that? That's why we hope in Christ. That's why we hope in Christ. There was this widow, the widow at Zarephath. That's all we know about her over in 1 Kings. And God sent Elijah to spend some time with her. And the first thing Elijah said is, I need you to give me something to drink. I need some bread. And she's like, I, can't, I, don't, I don't have hardly any flour. The oil is running low. There's a famine in the land. If you know the story, you understand why there was a famine. She goes, I don't know. And he said, just, you feed me. God will take care of everything else. You feed me. And so she did. And, and she got to experience this incredible miracle. The, the flour never ran out. And the oil never ran out. The whole time, the whole time he was there, Elijah the prophet. And I doubt she knew to hope for oil and flour that wouldn't run out. I mean, for us, that'd be kind of like hoping for gas in my tank that never runs out. And so this was going on, but then her son got sick, sick to the point of death. And so now her hope is disappointed. I mean, she's enjoying what God's doing, but now all of a sudden, boom, what? And to the prophet, why, why have you come here? God, why are you doing this in my life, why, in my son's life? And Elijah took the boy upstairs, prayed over him. He came back to life. Who knows the hope that way? You never know what's coming with God. You know, the great sermon that's been preached and, and re-preached and listened to over the years, that great Easter sermon, it's Friday. It's Friday, but, but Sunday's coming. You don't even know what it's going to be, but trust me, it's going to be incredible. It's Friday, but Sunday's coming. And, and in our lives, we have Fridays it's not necessarily a, a death and resurrection, but we have these Fridays in our life where we're just, our hope has been disappointed. It's not worked out the way it is. Maybe I've been dating this, this, this person for, for, 
for months or maybe even a year or more, and I, I was so convinced they were the right one. They were the one. And then they, and they broke up, and my hope was shattered. And I'm like, how, how can that be? I, I was so convinced this was God's purpose, and, but we still keep crying out to Jesus, even in that despondency. And then down the road, God brings the one that he's chosen for us into our life, and we realize and we look back and we say, I didn't even need to hope for this. I was willing to settle for second best rather than for God's best for my life. I was so hoping I would get that job. I was so hoping I would get that promotion. And you got bypassed. And your hopes just... Psh. But then even in the midst of that Friday, you still look to Jesus. And then maybe you get a phone call a little bit down the road. Hey, look. I know, I, know, I know where you are and what you're doing. I know you like your job, but we've been looking for this person for this kind of thing, and it pays this one, and if you'd be interested. You didn't even know to hope for that kind of thing. But that's what Jesus does. He's at work in the lives. He is trustworthy. He is, he is good. So on this Palm Sunday... To you, I would say, make sure that whatever you're hoping for, make sure it's what Jesus promises. That's where your hope needs to be. And then the other circumstances in life, the ones that knock you down for a little bit, disappoint you, that maybe you've invested a lot in, and they don't work out. It's part of this world, this imperfect world we live in. It's tough, but even in that despondency, keep looking to Jesus. Because even though whatever your circumstances is, maybe it feels like Friday, but I promise you, your Father loves you so much. Sunday's coming. Sunday's coming. Let's stand together and pray, and we'll go to our small groups. (laughs) Father God, what a great... What a great day to be in this room on this street corner, gathered as your people, your children in this room. Father, to hear the songs of faith. Father, to see the testimony of new believers, to share in fellowship, to study your word. And Father, I think all of us in here can relate to putting so much hope in a certain thing and it not coming coming about the way we thought and being so despondent, disappointed, heartbroken. Father, teach us the lesson of Palm Sunday, that it does lead to a very difficult Friday. But then after Friday, Sunday comes. May we always look for you. Bless every person in this room, every home represented, those watching online. And we just want... We just want to tell you, Jesus, that we love you, and we thank you today. Amen. Let's go to small groups.